Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's story took place in Sudan, specifically in Omdurman in 1999. Farmer named Hassan used to work on the farms owned by Hajj Hassan. Hajj Hassan used to rely on Hassan for everything and the goods he used to produce on the farms were like some of the best in the market. Because people trusted him and respected his integrity, they preferred doing business with him. Everyone respected him because he was kind, but he struggled because he was gifted with girls. Now, why would I say that he struggled because he was gifted with girls? Because he was in some sort of retaliation. I mean, there was something called, there's something called a tribe, either it's a blood wit or it could be another sort of revenge which could also include murder of the person. It's something between tribes, basically, in most of the countries. So here, they, what he knew, that they didn't ask for any blood money, so they would come back to him or any of his tribe members, but most probably it would be him. So here he used to, of course, think if something happens to him, what will happen to his daughters? So that was the reason that he was struggling from this kind of thinking. Now, people who genuinely cared for him warned him that he could be the next. And that made him, I would say, petrified. Again, if there was any sort of retaliation, they would probably take, take it from him. So consequently, he used to live his life, which was filled with fear. That is, he used to leave his house before dawn for the farm and used to stay late while occasionally he used to return to his house and occasionally he did not. The people were very cooperative in this case. In the beginning, of course, they were like, what kind of, how would we deal with such a thing if someone comes that early to deliver them uh, the produce? But because they trusted him, there was something which they thought that this man would is literally very honest, they thought that instead of being annoyed, they had this degree of confidence between him as a farmer and the vendors. And so they were willing to even hand over their keys of their stores that if he arrives earlier and didn't find them, he could depart with the goods still in the shops. Now, Another person here who was Ahmed. Ahmed was almost 19 years old at the time. And he was a troublemaker and he was quite um, a naughty person. So his father expelled him from his own house because of his smoking, of his bad habits and a gradual involvement with drugs. And the father also later decided that he didn't want to actually see him any longer and preferred that he pretend. He would pretend that he didn't exist. Once Ahmed had nowhere to go, so he, he was like, yes, I do have an uncle. And he lives in the farm most of the time, so why don't I go and seek shelter in his place? Of course, he went to his uncle, who loved him and used to treat him just like his own son. Even though, of course, I said that he didn't have a son. And... He went and Ahmed here told him the reason that why his father had ejected him from the house and the fight they had. Here after listening to whatever Ahmed has had to say, Hassan said that, listen, I would like to consider you to be my son, but for me to do that, you have to listen to every piece of advice I would be giving you. And I would love that you would just literally start a new life from scratch and stop the use of drugs. Ahmed here promised him and he said, you would be proud of me one day and I'll try my level best to stay away from these things. So here he took Ahmed and started buying for him clothes and other essentials. He, of course, asked Ahmed to stay with him. Now, of course, Hassan had a deal with Ahmed. He said, there are times when I leave the farm and go to my own house. At that very moment, you can take my place and I'll pay you a good amount of money for working. I mean, it would be considered as a salary. And Ahmed's life actually improved for the best. He developed into a very good person. 
he began to work in the farm and uh, the place where his uncle lived. And Ahmed was also one of the people who used to deliver the products occasionally. And the others, the people, of course, all around were impressed by the way he had begun working as as I previously mentioned. As he was a young kid, he could do better uh, the job in a better way, or I would say he would be quick and faster. So that was a plus point for Ahmed. Everything till now was going quite well. Ahmed here once was late. People expected that he would be delivering the goods. And then they realized that he's late, so maybe today we'll be seeing Hassan. But at the same time, after waiting for a long period time period, they realized even Hassan was not there. And that could be a matter of, I would say, it would be wrong because we are not talking about someone, someone coming or going to a specific appointment. It's something between traders. The, the produce or the products have to be there on time so they can actually sell it on time. And that could cost money. Time is money. And the vendors were depending heavily on things that, of course, to be on time. They thought maybe something else went wrong. Maybe Hassan is sick or... Ahmed went back to his father's house. They kept on asking each other that where would Ahmed and Hassan be? And one of them said that, okay, now almost five to six days have been passed, have passed by and it's, we have to go and check what's wrong. Here, one of the people or traders said that I would go and visit him and see what's wrong. When he reached the farm, he found that the gate was closed. He forced it open and kept on calling their names as Hassan and Ahmed, and no one answered. He then got closer to the house and saw the door open. It was partially open, so he pushed the door open and found a scene which is actually indescribable. He found Hassan's body. Of course, he found blood everywhere in the room. And he found Hassan lying on the floor. And his head was almost separated from his body. Means he was slaughtered. He immediately or right away called the police station. And the forensic department removed the body. And after speaking with the farmers and traders, it was discovered that Hassan had recently been working with Ahmed, his sister's son. So as a result of this, of course, the investigation started immediately because they have to find who's the killer. So they found out that, of course, as a result, the police went right away to Hassan's sister's house asking where Ahmed was. But after learning that Hassan was found dead here, the sister was worried that what could have happened to her son. Maybe some the person who had killed Hassan would have actually kidnapped Ahmed or had killed Ahmed and thrown his body somewhere else. I mean, there are different things which went on in her mind and the police itself. They said that, okay, initially, Ahmed is missing. And that might shed a light on what had happened or who had killed Hassan. So they had to find Ahmed. However, now, after further investigation, they learned that Ahmed was actually alive, very much alive in Khartoum. So they traveled there and detained him. Of course, they expected Ahmed to be dead or have been killed by someone else or have been kidnapped, as I said. After questioning Ahmed, they naturally asked him that if he had killed his uncle. And he replied, I did. And I feel the repentance for doing so. Okay, you feel the guilt of killing your uncle, but you did kill him. Yes. And why did you kill him? Well, I I would say maybe Ahmed got emotional. And, I mean, he cared for him more than his own father. And he had very high respect and love for this man. That couldn't be the reason of him killing his uncle, right? So then he explained, of course, that he and his uncle used to sleep in the same room. Once his uncle actually said him that he needed some of, I'm to say, some supplies, seeds and farming supplies. He called Ahmed and he said that, Ahmed, I want you to bring me some items that I'll be needing later. He said, of course, I will. Uh, So Hassan, he actually pulled out a box, which was hidden underneath the carpet. Means Hassan had dug a hole underneath the carpet and kept a box with a lock. And the key to the lock 
was around his neck in a thread. So he opened the box and it had like a huge amount of money. And he said, here you go, take this money and go get me some supplies. Ahmed here was having the time of his life or before what had happened or before seeing the money. He was seeing his future, his future self unfold before him, filled of opportunities. But all of a sudden, after seeing or having a look at the money, he felt the urge to take drugs. And here he was, he was confused what he should do. Means instead of thinking what a good person he had become after his uncle had given him a hand or a helping hand, an opportunity to improve, he was like, what should I choose? Do I choose stealing the money? from his uncle, who had not only given him, given him opportunities, who also thought that he was a son to him, who also thought that he could be one of, he could marry one of his daughters and become closer to him. And the farmers and traders knew Ahmed so well by now. But again, he had to choose. What he chose was money. Now, when he kept on walking towards the market to buy the things, he was thinking how he would manage to get his hands on the money and after doing so how would he get rid of his uncle and after getting rid of course if someone reports to the police he would be the first suspect how would he handle that if someone reports so he was planning everything and after all the preparation he had finally arrived and he saw his uncle and upon seeing he said as he said that he thought that it would be impossible to kill him means there there was a feeling that this is wrong, but it was wrong. But again, maybe he was confused of what was right and what was wrong, of course. So now here they had a dinner and they were drinking their tea and having a chat. And again, he was saying that that would be great if, if you know, like you're doing so good, you deserve to marry one of my daughters and be my son. All the good things which he had been repeating all the time which was extremely encouraging, but at the same time, it was a level of depression that, or a guilt in a person that I'm about to do this, but there's, there are no other options. I have decided. Anyways, so here, when he went to the market, actually, something caught his eye. It was a sickle knife. I mean, it is used by the farmers and it's a special, I mean, it's curved. So it's specially used for harvesting. So he thought he would buy this knife, telling that it's uh, something special from him or something he thought that it will be of use. But he wanted to use it, of course, for some other reasons. They fell, of course, uh, they fell asleep and Ahmed here was sleeping when he suddenly realized that he had an unfinished business. He looked around and here he noticed the sickle knife that his uncle had actually kept in one of the I would say uh, racks or a dis as a display actually thinking that this is something from him which he should display. Now here Ahmed thinking that it was an opportunity he could not pass because his uncle was so exhausted from returning from work he hardly had any energy. Ahmed here grabbed the knife and approached his uncle while he was sleeping I mean in deep sleep. Now he kept the blade of the knife precisely on his neck and he forced himself with all his energy to of course get rid of his uncle after his uncle realized or or felt that someone is, it's, is so close to him he woke up and he tried to defend himself but by that time he took the knife again and started stabbing him as soon as he opened the door i mean his uncle upon defending himself went towards the door and as soon as he opened the door out of fear that someone would hear his uncle Ahmed quickly seized him and removed the knife stabbed him and removed the knife from his body he took the thread which was around the neck of Hassan the thread which had the key uh, of the box which was underneath the carpet he grabbed it and of course by then Hassan was dead so now he thought that the best thing he could do was take the money and leave. The shock, there was a shock. The shock was that 
there was hardly anything inside. The amount of money he had seen before he could leave for the market was nothing compared to what he was seeing right now. So he had this feeling that when he left for the market or to buy the things, maybe one of the farmers or the owner had come to collect the money and took the money because there was nothing inside, literally. I mean, hardly anything. Ahmed was not, he was unaware that someone would be visiting him on that specific day. Now, because whatever, whatever he had done, he had the decision to depart to Khartoum, leaving everything behind. Now, for a month or so, he had, he, he had nothing to eat. He had nowhere to go. So he started uh, living underneath staircases or other places. When he was living in maybe a park or something, the police caught him. And they didn't know that there was a, there was a case filed against Ahmed in Omdurman. So when they arrested him, they mistakenly, of course, believed that he was a regular person. But then they discovered that he was the one they were looking for. Now, of course, he had confessed to, for whatever he had done. And he was given, um, I mean, sentenced to death. However, later, the family members of the tribe uh, or the tribe members of the man have appealed uh, for uh, the change in the decision or the sentence to be life imprisonment. And at the very end, it is very important for us to acknowledge the good that we already have and which is in life, which it could be a, a beginning of a great foundation. I mean, understanding your worth and value in life and appreciating everyone around you is the most important thing a person can do. So that's it for today and thank you for listening.